back. So last time we uh, finished up talking about the Marcu equation, and we saw um, several different conditions for how our intrinsic viscosity, this bracket uh, eta, scales as a function of molecular weight and some constant with a lot of kind of prefactors in front of it. So we derived last time that for a theta solvent, we saw that eta, intrinsic viscosity, scales as m to one half. For a good solvent, so alpha greater, much, much greater than one, we saw that eta scales as molecular weight as the eight tenths. And we saw for a bad solvent, uh, alpha much, much less than one, our eta is basically doesn't scale with m at all. So proportional to m to the zero power. So anyways, um, that's a great uh, kind of theoretical finding to have. But now our question is, how do we experimentally determine the intrinsic viscosity uh, and from that, uh, how to experimentally determine that and then g gain some information effectively about you when know, we're mixing uh, polymers at different you know, molecular weights, are we in a good solvent? Are we in a bad solvent? How, do we, how can we tell, um, depending on the polymer we're mixing, how will we, you know, can we deduce some information about uh, kind of the solvent quality? So how do we actually perform these measurements to get these key values like intrinsic viscosity and solvent quality at uh, A or alpha? and how it scales in the molecular weight. Well, first, we're going to typically measure the specific, the specific viscosity. So hopefully you remember, again, we had several definitions. So we had, this is just our polymer viscosity. This is the specific viscosity. So the gain in uh, basically the difference between the solvent viscosity and the viscosity um, associated with the polymer. And then we had our intrinsic viscosity as well. So the specific viscosity here, um, First thing we have to do is measure the specific viscosity for a series of different of uh, series of different concentrations. So um, you take different polymers, different concentrations, uh, mixtures of polymer and solvent, and you measure that specific viscosity. So the way these measurements are typically done, you extrude a, some molten polymer, you measure the flow rate, and back calculate um, that specific viscosity. So once you do these measurements, once you have those values, you'll make a plot um, that has a form like this. So it's the specific viscosity divided by concentration, and you'll get Basically, typically, you'll get this kind of linear slope here, where your y-intercept is your intrinsic viscosity here, intrinsic viscosity, and your slope is just, you have some slope times the uh, concentration. So let's take a look at this here. So hopefully I have a nice little schematic. So like we just said, for a series of concentrations, you measure that specific viscosity scaled by, or you know, normalized by your concentration. So you see, again, as concentration increases, your specific viscosity uh, increases, which makes sense. Um, why is the y-intercept, why does this give us that intrinsic viscosity? Well, look at the definition. Remember, our intrinsic viscosity is just the specific viscosity over concentration as the concentration goes to zero. So as our concentration decreases and decreases and decreases, at zero, we approach our limit, we get our intrinsic viscosity. So this is fantastic, right? Uh, we could basically call it a day and we're good to go. Not quite, because um, we could do a little bit more. Um, so if we then run a series of experiments, so we have to do the same set of experiments now, because this, all these experiments here were done at a single molecular weight, so M sub 1. If now uh, we could get information about our solvent quality if we run the same set of experiments, but now for a series of molecular weights, so molecular weight 1, molecular weight 2, molecular weight 3, where again, molecular weight three is greater than molecular weight two, greater than molecular weight you know, one, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So same set of experiments for different molecular weights. And now what you'll get, so this is just the plot we saw on up. Then you create a log log pot, uh, plot of intrinsic viscosity as a function of molecular weight. So if we have a plot of intrinsic viscosity, because again, that's what we're measuring, right? We repeat these same series of experiments. We extract this information for a given M1. So you run this set of experiments for a given M1. We extract that y-intercept slope. So now we have this specific, this intrinsic viscosity correlated to a given uh, molecular weight. So if we have a plot of viscosity as a function of molecular weight, intrinsic viscosity as a function of molecular weight, that is just our mark Ewing equation. So if we now plot this log log, we're going to get some interesting, uh, we're going to be able to extract some interesting par uh, parameters here. So, if I have this plot of log log, I can now determine my plot. Again, this is our fundamental equation, Mark Ewing equation. So if I do log, and people remember this, log of eta uh, equals log log k plus a 
log of m. So my y-intercept is going to give me some information. All of those kind of, again, these constants um, that kind of included that solvent quality. It included our uh, the length of our pump monomer unit, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, more importantly, the slope of this curve, A, is my solvent quality. So I know if A is equal to zero, I'm in a bad solvent. A is equal to 0 0.8, or if it's, you know, again, more generally, uh, A is equal to 0 0.5, I know I'm in a theta. A less than 0 0.5, I know that I'm in bad solvent. A greater than 0 0.5, I'm in a good solvent. So from this one single curve, we can gain information, all the information we see, how intrinsic viscosity scales as a function of molecular weight, again, it increases. But from that slope, we can get information about that solvent quality. And from the y-intercept, we could gain information about C infinity and uh, kind of these other constants that are thrown in here. So that's kind of the critical, this is the critical uh, graph that we have from this discussion of intrinsic viscosity. So from a single graph, we're able to kind of see, you know, again, really, really, really important information about solvent quality. And from solvent quality, we can kind of tell if it's a good solvent, my chi, my chi parameter is probably pretty low because they like to mix. If they're horrible, if they don't like to mix at all, probably going to be a bad solvent. And then again, we could kind of gain some information about chi and mixing and lots of other kind of parameters here. So um, we also know if it's a good solvent, bad solvent, how does our R squared value uh, scale as a function of n? So uh, we'll be able to kind of, again, relate that. Are we in a, um, a situation where we're in the freely draining or non-draining regime? Again, there's so many, you know, you can kind of see that it's all starting to come together now in terms of uh, possible exam questions that you might uh, encounter here. Uh, that is essentially, uh, uh, again, we have a little kind of brief summary. So we determined the intrinsic viscosity of a solution using that Einstein relationship and then that mark Hewing equation. That was kind of a critical, critical, critical idea. Um, so that is uh, the key, key, key thing here. We also talked about the two different regimes um, of polymer solution viscosity. So that is eta, not, that does not mean this guy. So keep that in mind. So freely draining regime, Polymer treated as elongated RON, uh, stink monomers, again, here, that viscosity scales as uh, N or M. So little N, not eta. Uh, and we also have a non draining regime with polymer treated as a single spherical cold. So here we found that the viscosity scales as, again, whatever your, if it was, this is for theta solvent, if this was for um, a good sol or a bad solvent, even if you're in a good solvent scenario like this. But again, much, much more viscous here. Again, that's what led to the non-Newtonian behavior um, and why we were able to, again, run across that uh, basically bath of cornstarch, um, whereas previously, again, we we're not because we we're dealing with a non-Newtonian uh, fluid. Non-Newtonian fluid, remember, uh, our viscosity is a function of our strain rate or our total strain. Yep. And we saw how that viscosity uh, scaled with molecular weight in those two regimes. So, um, yeah, that's essentially, this. so again, here's a kind of a summary. Also, there's this additional discussion of the viscosity average molecular weight. Um, it's a nice discussion to have. It's a key, it's a little nice, but, um, it's a nice distinction uh, to be made in terms of uh, how it relates the viscosity average molecular weight versus the number average, weight average molecular weight. Um, we're not going to uh, too much about that, but um, again, nice little discussion, something that you could know and uh, would want to have. So. But remember, when we're experimentally, experimentally measuring uh, viscosity, we want to measure the viscosity of a polymer solution for a series of concentrations. And then that intrinsic viscosity, so we're looking at here, A to SP. And then here, we're looking at measure this for a series of molecular weights. So it's our first step. We extract this key piece of information, get this plot, and then now we are good to go. So. Uh, that's it for lecture five. So we'll get into lecture six um, next time. We're gonna talk about a really cool concept of uh, osmometry. So hopefully you remember um, uh, a little bit back to kind of some uh, chemical potentials, some Flory Huggins theories. Um, hopefully you've kind of come to uh, see this before, but it's a nice, um, a really, really cool, uh, again, experimental uh, with some theory. Again, I can't uh, help myself with a little bit of theory, but um, some experimental values that are gonna allow us to calculate some really cool uh, properties. So again, We'll be looking at kind of some of these graphs and how do we interpret them and how do we pull out some uh, key properties from them. So, yeah, uh, that's for next time. So I'll see you then. And, uh, yeah, let me know if you have any questions. Thanks. Have a good one. Bye.